Good morning, everyone. Good morning. 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 Good Denise and Lisa Jane, her sons-in-law Noel and Shane, and her sisters Ina and Nancy and Tess, her brothers Philip and John, and brothers-in-law, sisters-in-law, nieces, nephews, and the extended relations, family circle, and many friends. And to all of them, on behalf of myself and Father Stefano and all our parishioners, and all of you here present, I extend our sincere sympathies. May they and all of us find comfort, hope and consolation in our Mass here this morning. We remember also Josephine's late husband, Matt. And yesterday, as you know, was the Feast of All Souls, a commemoration of all the faithful departed. And All Souls Day and during the month of November, we do remember and we pray for all our deceased loved ones, our family members, our neighbours and friends, and for all who are enrolled in our parish list of the day. So let us pray also then for the loved ones of the many families recently bereaved here in our parish. And we pray also for Michal Smith, whose burial will take place tomorrow afternoon in Balabusta Cemetery at approximately 2.30. We welcome all who are participating in Josephine's funeral mass via the live streaming courtesy of Joe Finnegan. Josephine's family, please be assured that together with her wide circle of family and friends, we all surround you with our love and our prayers at this time. I invite Denise now to describe for us the symbols of Josephine's life which will be brought forward to the altar and placed on the table in front of the altar. Today we have the members of Josie's family who will bring up a few symbols of her life. First we have Lisa Jane, Josie's daughter-in-law, who will bring up a family photo. Josie had strong love for her family and deeply appreciated how much was done for both her and Matt throughout the last number of years. <coughs> Next we have Nathan, Josie's grandson, who will bring up a box of Smarties, which she always had ready for her grandkids. Next we have Evan, Josie's grandson, who will bring up this week's RTE guide. Josie loved to flick through it weekly, as she loved nothing more than to be at home watching her favourite TV programmes. Next we have Ronan, Josie's grandson, who will bring up Josie's lipstick, Max Factor 120, representing Josie's love for her style. Next we have Kyle, Josie's grandson, who will bring up a little red car, representing Josie's car the car known to all as Bubbles. Josie loved her little red car, choosing it over Matt's any time. Finally, we have Shane, Josie's son-in-law, who will bring up a photo of Matt and Josie, symbolising how they are now reunited in heaven.
Thank you all very much indeed. And isn't the little fella great that he handed over the box of Smarties? <laughs> no. So now to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, I invite you to stand and we call to mind our sins for the times when we fail in our love for God and for one another. And we ask God's pardon and peace. Now, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, and what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask that Mary of a virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Let us pray. O God, whose nature is always to forgive and to show mercy, we humbly implore you for your servant Josephine, whom you have called from this life to yourself. And since she hoped and believed in you, grant that she may be led to our true homeland to delight in its everlasting joys. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to sit now, please, and be listening to the reading of the Word of God. The first reading will be read for us by uh, Josie Stockton, Law Teresa, and the Psalm by her granddaughter, Emma, and Noel, her son-in-law, will lead the second reading. First reading, a reading from the book of Ecclesiasticus. For everything there is a season, and a time for every matter under heaven. A time to be born, and a time to die. A time to plant, and a time to root up what is planted. A time to break down, and a time to build up. A time to weep, and a time to laugh. A time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek, and a time to lose, a time to keep, and a time to discard, a time to tear, and a time to sow, a time to keep silence, and a time to speak. God has made everything suitable for its time. The word of the Lord. Second reading, a reading from St. Paul to Timothy. As for me, my life has already been poured away as a libation, and the time has come for me to be gone. I have fought the good fight to the end. 
I have run the race to the finish. I have kept the faith. All there is to come now is the crown of righteousness reserved for me, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day. And not only to me, but to all those who have longed for his appearing. This is the word of the Lord. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Whosoever believes in me will have eternal life. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God still and trust in me. There are many rooms in my Father's house, for if there were not, I should have told you. And I am going now to prepare a place for you, and after I have gone and prepared you a place, I shall return to take you with me, so that where I am, you may be too. You know the way to the place where I am going. But Thomas said, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. So once again, a warm welcome to all as we gather here for Josephine's funeral mass. A wonderful woman, wife, mother, grandmother, sister, and good friend to so many. A kindly, good and generous lady who loved to help others. And Josephine lived her life to the full until her peaceful and her serene passing from this world to her heavenly home on Sunday last. She was surrounded with her family, her children and grandchildren by her side who had enfolded her in their love. Josephine was an exceptional woman, a woman of strong faith a faith and a belief in the love of God for her and for her family. And it was her faith that supported her and sustained her all throughout her life. Her faith and her trust in God enabled her to cope with any and all of life's challenges and difficulties. And as you all know, well, November is a special month when we remember our dear departed loved ones, the month of the Holy Souls. On Tuesday, we celebrated the Feast of All Saints, And yesterday, the 2nd of November, we had the commemoration of all the faithful departed, All Souls Day. At this time of year, we cherish and we treasure the memories of our departed loved ones. And as St. Ambrose teaches us, we have loved them in life, let us not forget them in death. And so we do remember them, and we pray for them, and they in their turn will pray for us also. And thankfully, praying for our deceased loved ones remains a strong part of our Irish culture and our tradition. The support and the kindness we offer one another at times of bereavement is very much appreciated by grieving families. And I know how much Josephine's family appreciates all of you at this time. In parish churches all around the country, we bring to the altar the parish list of the dead. Today is the Feast of St. Malachi. And I'd like to remember my own brother Paddy, whose first anniversary we celebrate this evening. Josephine Mead was born and raised in Barnesville Town in Lobans Town into a family of three sisters, Ina, Nancy and Tess, and two brothers, Philip and John. She went to primary school in Hearns Town, where some of her grandchildren now go. Josephine married Matt Dornan at the age of 22 and they started building their new home. In 1980, they moved to their family home in Smarmore where they remained throughout their lives, raising their six children. They settled well into the community and they had their children and made their lifelong friends, many of whom are with us here today. 
Josephine spent her working life in the administration sector. However, her true commitment and dedication was assisting Matt run the family business. She was hands-on in the business where she and her children helped with the fruit and vegetable packing. <coughs> Josephine had full responsibility for the accounts and all to ensure the smooth running of the business. The legacy of their business continues to grow strong and is still run by her family today. Josephine had a great sense of fun and it is no coincidence that her passing has occurred at this time of the year as it was on one occasion when she clearly demonstrated this fun and sense of humour that she had. I'm told every year she would dress up to scare the grandchildren and their parents, which she thoroughly enjoyed doing. She always had and loved to play pranks on anyone and really enjoyed sharing the stories of how the prank went and the reaction of those involved. She was a lady who always displayed a great sense of style, and this was widely known by many of you. And anyone indeed who knows Josephine will know that she never left the house without her hair done and the lipstick on. And wasn't it great the little fella brought a copy of the lipstick? <laughs> I'm telling you, as long as he isn't wearing it. <laughs> this sense of style fueled her love for shopping. But during the COVID Josephine demonstrated her love also for fashion by moving to online shopping and to ensure that she could keep up with the, tri the trends. She loved to wear bright colours and took great pride in her clothes and in her appearance and the style she was wearing. Everything perfectly organised in not one, not two, but three wardrobes. She also enjoyed YouTube and joined a WhatsApp group to keep in touch with the family to ensure that she would keep up with the crack and love nothing more than joining online weekly family bingo every Friday evening. She was also indeed a woman of simple needs and very happy just to be surrounded by her family. Even in her sickness over the last year, all she wanted was to be at home. Josephine was very proud of her grandchildren, always greeting them with a smile and that famous box of Smarties even all through her illness. And she also demonstrated her sense of adventure when she would go to their camping trips and show up at their football matches and so on. And while this year, 2022, has brought considerable sadness, it's also for the family a very poignant and significant year as it marked their 50th wedding anniversary. Matt and Josephine were inseparable in life and so, it's no surprise that within the year they are now reunited with one another. On Saturday afternoon, Josephine received the last rites of the church and despite being very ill, she joined in the prayers along with her loving family who surrounded her. Her passing from this life was serene and peaceful on Sunday. A great solace for her family to know that a loving mother and a kindly mother and grandmother is not so much left them, but rather she is now gone to join her beloved husband Matt, her parents and her many friends and neighbours who have gone ahead of her into that place of light, happiness and peace which we call heaven. Gathered here we profess our belief that our life does not come to an end but rather to completion and to fulfilment. And as the preface of the Mass will remind us Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed and not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for us in heaven. So gathered here today in faith, we believe that those who are gone ahead of us join the saints in heaven, and that they can and they do help us and they intercede for us whenever we ask and whenever we pray through their intercession. We all believe in the communion of saints. And that's what family values are all about, love and care for one another. A love that gives support, brings comfort and encouragement, and especially in difficult and sad times, reassures us and reminds us that our faith is the rock on which our family is built. Josephine Dornan's faith was built on solid rock. She had her priorities right. She loved life, 
she loved her family, and she instilled into them the values of her faith, fidelity to prayer, to the Mass and to the sacraments, to one another. And in, her, and in turn, her family were exemplary in the love and the care that they lavished on their dear mother during her illness and cared for her at home, as they did also for their late father, Matt. The readings of the Word of God we have just listened to offers us consolation. It brings us hope and strengthens that hope. In the first reading, the book of Ecclesiastes assures us there is a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die. Josephine was a person who never wasted time. She knew her life was a gift from God, her God whom she loved so much. God, the author of all life. And her faith and her belief in God was indeed her strength. Her faith enabled her to cope with any and all of life's challenges and difficulties. The second reading, St. Paul writing to Timothy tells us, I have fought the good fight to the end. I have run the race to the finish. I have kept faith. And how very true for Josephine, as we gather here to thank God for her life well lived. Josephine was a person who was patient and kind and whose faith and practice of her faith had an influence for good on herself and for others as a loving wife, a mother, a grandmother, a good neighbour and a friend to many, generous and caring, helpful and kind. And so today we give thanks and we praise God for the influence that she had on so many, especially on her family, as she lived her life in imitation of the Lord himself. A woman who loved her prayers and prayed so often, especially for anyone in any kind of need, whether it was sickness or whatever trouble they were experiencing, Josephine, together with her family, said their prayers for them. In the Gospel, Jesus tells us, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God still and trust in me. I am going now, he says, to prepare a place for you, and after I have gone and prepared you a place, I shall return to take you with me, so that where I am, you may be too. Dear friends, today is indeed a sad occasion for Josephine's family, particularly for our sons Ivor, Philip, James and Brendan, and daughters Joan and Rushing, and all our family and wide circle of friends. However, it is because of our faith in the resurrection and our belief in the risen Lord that we gather in faith to celebrate this funeral mass for Josephine here this morning. We believe that her life well lived now has not come to an end, but as I have mentioned, to completion and to fulfilment. Now that her time in this life has ended, we entrust her to God in giving thanks for her life. And although hearts are broken in sadness and grief, we do place our trust in God. As our family and friends gathered here today, we give thanks to God for Josephine's life well lived and the example she was to her family, her neighbours and friends. Josephine will be sadly missed but not forgotten. So we entrust her now to God and we continue on our own pilgrimage through this life. We pray that all of us will live now by faith, full of hope, giving thanks, and reaching out in loving kindness and service. That is what Josephine would want us to do. That is what she did during her lifetime herself. We pray that Josephine, having completed her earthly life, hears now those words of Jesus, Come, you whom my Father has blessed, take possession of that place prepared for you since the foundation of the world. May Josephine stand before God who is loved, in a joy-filled eternity. Josephine, may the angels lead you into paradise. May you be forever happy in the company of Mary, our Blessed Mother, and of all the saints, and of all those of family and friends who have gone ahead of you, marked with the sign of faith. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord, that perpetual light shine upon her. May she rest in peace. Josephine, may your gentle soul and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen.
So now I invite her grandchildren to lead the prayers of the faithful, Keith, Sarah, Alan, Ran, Kieran, Rachel and Aaron. God has loved us so much, we too should love one another. For no one has ever seen God, but so long as we love one another, God will live in us and his love will be complete in us. And we know that love is stronger than death. So let us now offer our prayers to God, who first loved us. Dear Lord, as we present Nana's soul to your heavenly care, we give thanks for the gift of our life. We thank you, Lord, for the privilege of being part of our family and life. In faith and trust, we ask you to grant Nana the peace and rest that she so richly deserves. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. We pray for the family and friends of Nana in these difficult days ahead. May they find light in times of darkness and faith in times of doubt. May their tears be wiped away and may their memories of Nana always remain in their hearts. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. Dear Lord, we pray for all who looked after Nana throughout her illness, especially the doctors, nurses, carers, palliative of care team, and RD hospice, who ensured her comfort and provided her great care. May God reward their goodness and kindness. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. Dear Lord, we pray for all our departed brothers and sisters, especially Grandma. Today we pray for Nana. May Nana be united with Granda in God's kingdom. May God unite them in their happiness and peace of this heavenly home. Lord, hear us. Lord, Dear Lord, we pray for all who are ill at this time. May God lay his healing hand on them and give them courage and hope. Lord, Lord hear us. Lord, hear us. For all those who have died, especially Nana's niece Jacqueline, <clears throat> who recently departed, and all the departed members of Nana's family and friends, we pray for them they may share the peace, joy, and happiness of eternal life in heaven. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. Dear Lord, we pray in thanksgiving for our family, neighbours and friends who have been so kind to us during this time of sadness. May God reward their kindness and bless their homes with happiness, happiness and peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, we ask our Blessed Lady to pray for us both now and at the hour of our own death as we pray that lovely prayer talk to us all by our mothers. In Mary, for the grace of our Lord, so bless our God and his women, bless us the fruit of thy Holy Spirit. For the Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Lord, support us all the day long, the shadows lengthen, and the evening comes, the busy world is hushed, the fever of life is over, and our work is done. Then, Lord, in your great mercy, grant us all a safe lodging, a holy rest, and peace at last, through Christ our Lord. Amen. So, Josie's daughters, uh, Roshin and Joan, will bring forward the bread and wine, which will become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the Eucharist here today.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant Josephine, we beseech your mercy. And she who did not doubt your Son to be a loving Saviour may find in him the merciful Judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection is dawn, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed and not ended, and when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for us in heaven. And so with all the angels, archangels, thrones, and minions in the heavenly hosts, we join the hymn of your glory, as without end to be our king. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Son and I. Let the seed comes in the name of the Lord. Amen. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon the night of the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. <coughs> In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring word to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Eamon, our Bishop, his Assistant Bishop Michael, all the clergy, the religious, your people everywhere. Remember also all our brothers and sisters, especially your servant Josephine, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember all who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome then into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, her blessed spouse, Saint Joseph, with the blessed Apostles, Saint Malachi, Saint Catherine, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you, through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. And so we stand together and we pray the word of Jesus, our living Christ. Our Father, and our Son, and our Son, and our Son, Deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. By the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Amen. We can have two or three Eucharistic ministers, please. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world and mercy us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world and mercy us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world and mercy
Invite Maria now to read the communion reflection for us, please. I would like to begin this morning by reading a reflection in memory of Josie and to conclude by reading to you a very special message that Josie has asked me to share to her loving family. Reflection, come with me. God saw you getting tired and a cure was not to be. So he put his arms around you and whispered, come with me. With tearful eyes, we watched you suffer and saw you fade away. Although we loved you dearly, we could not make you stay. A golden heart stopped beating, hard-working hands at rest. God broke our hearts to prove he only takes the best. It's lonesome here without you. We miss you more each day. Life doesn't seem the same since you've gone away. When days are sad and lonely and everything goes wrong, we seem to hear you whisper, cheer up and carry on. Each time we see your picture, you seem to smile and say, don't cry, I'm in God's keeping, we'll meet again someday. You never said I'm leaving, you never said goodbye. You were gone before we knew it, and only God knew why. A million times we needed you, a million times we cried. If love alone could have saved you, you never would have died. In life, we loved you dearly. In death, we love you still. In our hearts, you hold a place that no one else could ever fill. It broke our hearts to lose you, but you didn't go alone. For part of us went with you. The day that God took you home on your heavenly journey, to reunite with Matt, your loving husband. If I may for a moment, I would like to read a message from Josie that she has asked to share with her family. On behalf of myself and Matt, we want to tell our loving family, Joan, Roshi, Ivor, Philip, James and Brendan, how very proud we are of each of them. 
We would like to thank them for their huge devotion, their time and their patience shown to us during our life. A special thanks to you all for everything you have done for both of us in our sickness. Thanks to our sons-in-law and daughters-in-law, Noel, Shane, Teresa, Maria, Denise and Lisa Jane for all their help and support. To all our grandchildren for all the fun times and adventures we have shared together those memories we will always treasure in our hearts. Thanks to everyone who cared for us and helped us throughout our illness. To conclude, on behalf of the Darnan family, we would like especially to thank Canon Murphy for everything over the last few days. Also, a huge thanks to Mary and Stephen for the beautiful music played here today. I have no doubt that Nana would have loved every bit of it. Also thanks to everyone who supported us over the last 10 months since the loss of our beloved Father Matt and also in recent days for all your generosity and kindness. Today, as we go our separate ways, let us always remember Josie with a very special place in both our hearts and our homes. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Maria, and to all who have taken part in our liturgy here today. It's very obvious indeed that Josie and Matt were a wonderful family who cared for them particularly well in their final illnesses and they are a credit to their parents. So we thank God for that wonderful witness to family life and the love and care that is shared among them. Thanks again to, to uh, Mary and Steve for the lovely music that uplifted our liturgy this morning. And to all who took part in it and to all of you who are here showing your support and your prayer and your sympathy with the family this time. And as I've said, it's very much appreciated by them. O sacrament, most holy, O sacrament of man, our grace and all things given to every woman. O sacrament, most holy, O sacrament of man, our grace and all things given to every woman. O sacrament, most holy, O sacrament of man, our praise and all thanksgiving for the every moment. Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body food for the journey, mercifully grant that, strengthened by it, our sister Josephine may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Let us bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. May the blessings now of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon us all in the name of us forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Dear friends, before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our sister Josephine. May our farewell express our affection for her. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet her again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. And I sprinkle her coffin with the holy water, calling to mind the day of her baptism when she received the gift of eternal life in that sacrament. We incense her mortal remains, reminding us that our bodies are the temples of God's Holy Spirit.
Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Saints of God, come to her aid, hasten to meet her, angels of the Lord. May Christ, who called you, take you to himself. May the angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our sister Josephine in the sure and certain hope that, together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the many blessings you bestowed upon her in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with all the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with the assurances of our faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and our sister forever. May the angels lead you into paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome you and take you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. May the choirs of angels welcome you where Lazarus is poor no longer. May you find eternal rest. In peace, let us take our sister now to her place of rest here in Balapusta Cemetery.